If you're a Blazor developer, you cringe at the thought of how I feel you. I've been working with Blazor professionally since 2020. You know, I've switched jobs twice since then, and I don't seem to be able to get away from it. And you know what? I don't hate it. Blazor is actually very chill experience. Minus the hot reload, state management, and well, a few other things. But if, if you're willing to peek over the fence and look at another honestly very similar, but straight up better experience, I'm here to show you the way. Over the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you Nuxt and you will understand it because I understand you, the Blazor developer. I am you, but I also love Nuxt. Interested? Let's go. First, let's tackle the elephant in the room. Blazor is C-sharp, Nuxt is TypeScript. Both are type languages. Both have classes, methods, fields, properties, getters, async await, and many other features. But TypeScript is just not C-sharp. It's not as pretty, it's not as powerful, it's not compiled really, because TypeScript, you know, as the creators say, really is just JavaScript. Wait, 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 don't click off. I've been writing C-sharp for over 15 years. And you know what? I hated TypeScript when it first arrived. Hell, even as recently as 2021, I started a new project in JavaScript, despite TypeScript being an option. But now, 2025, and inside Nuxt, my hatred has dissipated. TypeScript has had time to mature, and honestly, it's fine. Again, it's not C-sharp, but it's fine. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk similarities. Both Blazor and Nuxt use the component model. In Blazor, you use Razor files. In Nuxt, you use View files. Inside, you have HTML and component logic code. The only difference is that if you want to scope styles in a component in Nuxt, you'll do this inside the view file. No separate CSS file is required. Note, this syntax is quite different from JSX, though view components also do support JSX syntax if you, know, if you like that kind of thing. While we're on the topic of components, let's talk about the basics. Parameters in Nuxt are the same, just different syntax. Emitting events out of components from uh, child to parent is also supported, but again, the syntax is gonna be a little different. Model binding, it's all there. Okay, so you know about components, let's talk project structure and routing. In Blazor, you can put files anywhere, in any folder. Compiler will figure it out for you. In Nuxt, however, where you put things is very opinionated. It does give your project a solid structure, but it does take some of the flexibility and the power out of your hands. For example, client-side routes must reside in the slash app slash pages folder, and server routes in the slash server slash API slash routes folder. Components you want to reuse throughout your application should reside in the components folder and any functions or state that you want to share across the application should be inside the composables folder. Speaking of sharing state, <laughs> let's touch on state management. This is where Blazor and Nux diverge a bit. In Blazor, if you use a singleton to share state, that's fine if your site is fully client side. But the moment you go to server, that's no longer the case. You don't want to use a singleton there for obvious reasons. So how do you do state in a Blazor hybrid app? Cascading parameters, local component state, a scoped class with action event emitters, database or browser. Honestly, it's a bit of a mess. And for a while, Nuxt was also a bit of a mess, especially at the very beginning of Nuxt 3. But now over the last year and change, with Pinya on the scene, state management is extremely easy. You enable a module, Pinya, and your state is automatically persisted on the server and in client memory. No need to wire up your own action handlers like in Blazor. Okay, we're almost to the end here. Let's talk rendering modes. We have similar options here, but the implementation is gonna be a little bit different. Blazor can be static server rendered, something you'd see in a PHP or a Rails application. Now you can go a step further and enable WebSocket-based interactivity 
that gives you client-like experience with HTML rendered on the server still. You can also go hybrid where some of the page is WebSocket interactivity and some is client only web assembly. It gets complicated. You know, that's called hybrid mode. And you know, when, when you're dealing with state management, especially it can get out of hand. In Nuxt, just like in Blazor, you can specify per route rendering modes. Maybe some stuff you want to render on the server, other stuff you want to render client side. And you know, Blazor added the support in .NET 8 and Nuxt also has it now too. To sum it up, render modes between the two frameworks are same, but different. They're called different things, but essentially it's the same functionality, SSR and client side. Great, let's sprint to the finish with a few more quick ones. Ecosystem. So the Blazor ecosystem is, well, let's face it, one of its weak points. It's not awful by any means, but it's just not the level of Nuxt and more widely views. Libraries like Mudblazor or uh, Fluent UI can be substituted uh, by various view UI libraries or Nuxt UI, which is very popular. There's no real direct comparison here, but suffice it to say, you'll never not find something that you need working with Nuxt. If you need to make HTTP client requests, there's use fetch for that. Identity management can be done with a plethora of third-party integrations or Nuxt auth utils. There are tons of excellent zero configuration modules you can integrate straight into Nuxt. I have a video with my favorite ones here if you're interested. But honestly, any JavaScript library can be used in Nuxt without needing to wrap it in interop code. This is a big W for Nuxt or, well, any JavaScript framework. Nuxt comes with tooling hosted by the server process right in the browser. Admittedly, I haven't found it super useful, but it does give you a good overview of the state of your application. The closest equivalent to this in Blazor would be Watch and Immediate Windows in Visual Studio's debugger. Speaking of debugger, ah yes. Let's just say debugging in Nuxt is gonna leave some scars. It's it's hot garbage. I do hope they're working on making it easier to use and more stable. Uh, Blazor and honestly, really anything in .NET has the best debugging game in town, hands down. I haven't found myself debugging all too often in Nuxt, but when I need to, it's like nails on a chalkboard. So just, you know, be prepared for that. Lastly, let's talk deployment. Blazor's preferred way is probably deploying to Azure. You can definitely host it in a container anywhere containers are supported. Uh, if you're building a client side app with WebAssembly, you can also host that, you know, anywhere that static hosting is supported, like Cloudflare Pages. Surprise, I also have a video on that up here. Next, on the other hand, has zero config deployment targets and supports lots of different providers. If you need to, you can also host it in a container, but these zero config providers are an insane time saver. I mean, look at this list of supported providers. If you've lasted this far into the video, thank you. It means a lot to me. Hopefully you've learned a few things about Nuxt. If you're thinking about trying it out, the learning curve is very small. The switch is mostly syntactical, like at on click becomes at click at if becomes vf and so on. Thankfully, Nuxt has really, really good docs and a helpful community. Coming from C-sharp to TypeScript is a bit of a shift, but you know what? At least stuff is typed now. There are still classes, methods, fields, properties, getters, and so on, but it's a bit of a shift. Thankfully, the TypeScript team also has a great write-up for C-sharp devs wanting to learn TypeScript. I will leave a link for that in the description. There are some differences in how reactivity works. The composition API syntax, for example, is also challenging at first, but once you grasp it, you'll be blown away at how easy it is to get an app up and running. You can learn Nuxt in a weekend, maybe a week if you have kids. There are a lot of similarities like component-based architecture, component scope styling, uh, routing, which is syntactically different, but conceptually the same. Uh, rendering modes are essentially the same too. And 
all the framework fundamentals like model binding, control flow, it's all there. If this sounds interesting to you, check out this next video where I talk about why Nuxt is my favorite framework, despite working in Blazor in my day job over the past six years. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.